from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Tuesday, December the 5th, 2017. The White House said that U.S. President Donald Trump's decision on whether or not he will sign the waiver on the relocation of the American Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem would happen in the coming days. The White House made that statement yesterday, which was the official deadline for the waiver. Signing the waiver would postpone the moving of the embassy by another six months and has been signed by every U.S. president since Bill Clinton. Speculation is that President Trump will address whether he will sign the waiver or not and possibly recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital in an announcement tomorrow. Last night, the president spoke over the phone with Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas and White House spokesperson Sarah Sanders said today that Trump this morning was making calls to Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and to Jordan's King Abdallah II, all said to be in connection with the expected announcement tomorrow. Palestinian and Arab leaders have warned of severe repercussions, and some European countries have expressed their opposition as well to both a recognition of Jerusalem as Israel's capital and to moving the embassy. The Palestinian Authority's official news outlet Wafa reported that Trump did inform President Abbas in the phone call last night of his, quote, intention to relocate the embassy, though the report did not specify when the president said that would happen. The report said also that Abbas reiterated to Trump that the firm Palestinian position is that, quote, there is no Palestinian state without East Jerusalem as its capital and that moving the embassy to Jerusalem would be dangerous for the peace process and for peace in the region. Wafa later reported that Abbas was trying to rally world leaders against Trump's reported intentions. And the Hashemite kingdom released a similar statement after Trump's call to Jordan's king, who also warned of dangerous repercussions. It remains to be seen what the expected announcement from the president in fact holds and what its impact will be. Shots were fired this afternoon at an Israeli bus in the northern West Bank. The IDF said the incident took place near the Arab village of Yabad and the Jewish settlement of Mavodotan. There were no injuries and Israeli security forces were looking for the shooter or shooters. While Israel's Bedouin community in its southern region is coming together to reaffirm its commitment to coexistence following the terror attack Thursday night in Arad that left an IDF soldier dead. Two Bedouin suspects, who are reportedly brothers, were arrested Friday for stabbing Ran Yitzchak Kukia to death. The nomadic Arab community has a large presence in Israel's Negev, and attacks such as last week's are quite rare. Yesterday, the mayors of several Bedouin cities and villages in the Negev met with the mayor of Arad, including Mayor of Rahat, Talal al Kranawi, who said, referring to the suspects, they are weeds and we must root them out, urging don't let this terrible incident harm the coexistence between us. Israel signed an agreement today with Greece, Italy and Cyprus to work towards an undersea gas pipeline that would carry natural gas from deposits in the eastern Mediterranean to Europe. Israel's energy minister Yuval Steinitz met with his Greek, Italian and Cypriot counterparts in Nicosia, Cyprus today. The ministers released a joint statement after the signing saying the project would secure a direct long-term export route from Israel and Cyprus to Greece, Italy, and other European markets. The multi-billion dollar pipeline is expected to take about six or seven years to complete. Israel's Ministry of Foreign Affairs is hosting its second annual International Conference on Digital Diplomacy this week. The gathering brings diplomats and experts from around the world together to discuss how foreign ministries and governments can better adapt to the internet and social media. Canadian singer Brian Adams performed in Tel Aviv last night to a sold-out crowd. He posted a video afterwards on his Instagram account showing him greeting the fans outside the Nokia Arena and signing autographs. Adams takes the stage in Jerusalem tomorrow night. And taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Tuesday, December the 5th at 7 o'clock, former Jerusalem Bureau Chief of the New York Times, Jody Rudoran talks about what she learned covering the Arab-Israeli conflict. And then at 8, 
Another former Jerusalem Bureau chief of the Times, Ethan Bronner, talks about his experience and perspective from the rabbi circle Congregation Sons of Israel in Briarcliff Manor, New York. At 9, Mark Golub sits down with CBS News correspondent Dan Raviv, who talks about his book Spies Against Armageddon, Inside Israel's Secret Wars on L'chaim. At 10, the Shalem Center's Daniel Gordas discusses the significance of the Balfour Declaration. And coming up right after this newscast tonight at 6.30, the ILTV debate program Frenemies. And that's the JBS News update for Tuesday, December the 5th, 2017. I'm Tisha Bader.